president's car is now turning onto Elm Street, and it will be only a matter of minutes before he arrives at the trademark. I was on Simmons Freeway earlier, and even the freeway was jam-packed with spectators waiting their chance to see the president as he made his way towards the trademark. Something has happened in the motorcade route. There's numerous people running up the hill. Something, I repeat, has happened in the motorcade route. Governor Connolly was shot in the upper left chest, and the first unconfirmed reports say the president was hit in the head. That's an unconfirmed report that the president was hit in the head. The president's wife, Jackie Kennedy, was not hurt. She walked into the hospital at her husband's stretcher side. Just a moment. The president of the United States is dead. I have just talked to Father Oscar Hubert of the Holy Trinity Catholic Church. He and another priest tell me that the pair of men have just administered the last rites of the Catholic Church to President Kennedy. President Kennedy has been assassinated. It's official now. The president is dead. Women here in shock, some have fainted. Grown men, Secret Service men standing by the emergency room, tears streaming down their face. There's only one word to describe the picture here, and that's grief. Ask anyone who was alive on this date 50 years ago. They can almost without a doubt remember exactly where they were when they found out that the president had been shot and that Jack Kennedy, in fact, was dead. In the half century since, volumes have been written and presented about what happened, who was responsible, and of course, about the chaotic days that followed, from the funeral procession and the formal national mourning, complete with the image of the president's son, John Jr., or John John, saluting his father, as the casket rolled past. We go on to the impossible to believe sequence of events that followed in Dallas. The president's alleged killer himself shot dead, adding mystery, intrigue, and of course questions that 50 years have done little to answer. But what was it really like in Dallas and in the aftermath in November of 63? And for answers, we turn to Mickey Carroll. Carol, of course, a force in today's political world, director of the influential Quinnipiac Polling Institute, one of the best polling outfits in the country. Fifty years ago, Carol, a reporter covering it all for the New York Herald Tribune newspaper, and he's kind enough to join us now. Mickey, thanks for a few minutes. Nice to talk with you. Does it feel like 50 years? No, it seems like yesterday. <laughs> That's the oldest cliche there is. It seems like yesterday, but it does seem like yesterday. You know, I remember what that police headquarters was like. Uh, I remember the way everybody in America did, feeling uh, wounded somehow or other personally by the assassination of the president. But then uh, being there and, and talking to the cops and doing everything you do, it, it, it honestly, God, it seems like yesterday. You know, it's funny, Mickey. My father was in the military station abroad 50 years ago, and he, and he heard through foreign voices um, when he came out of a movie theater President Morta, and he said, what are you talking about? And, and he said, even from the perspective there, how many people in a different part of the world all convened on how this was a huge international event because Kennedy meant so much to so many people. And I'm curious, um, from a Roman Catholic, um, you know, in, in the 60s, in, in an election that people thought would have been impossible, how much this resonated. I mean, people say, oh, it was a huge event, but can you put into words just how much this was a punch to the gut of the country? Well, it, it, it certainly was. The, the reporters from New York had a special plane, American Airlines said, if you can get there on time, we'll fly you to Dallas. And they did. Uh, and, and so the, there, there were two things going at once, if you will. One is the, 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 the wound suffered by the country by all of us, we're all Americans. And the other one was the, the, the nervousness of, of covering a, a story bigger than, than any of us had ever, ever covered. And going back over um, what you had written and, and also some of the other books, in debunking uh, a lot, Mickey, of the conspiracy theories that happened, why do you think it became such uh, a cottage industry for 50 years, everybody with their respective theories. I mean, to be honest, you listen to Garrison talk, uh, the old clips yeah. now, the idea that, you know, this guy had it all figured out when you hear him speak within two sentences, you say, wait a second, this it's, was it's the a voice of conspiracy, but yet no, to this day, uh, well, national polls show more people believe it was a conspiracy than something what? Something like 60% of people think that there was a conspiracy. I'll tell you, look, 
A, the president is murdered by a nobody, a buck and a quarter an, uh, an hour warehouse clerk. It doesn't seem right that, that a nobody should have such an effect on the president, the glamorous president of the United States. But that would be enough of, a cons of, of, of an impetus for conspiracy theories. But then the murderer is murdered two days later in the middle of police headquarters, surrounded by about a zillion policemen with guns. So obviously you had to think, hey, there's more to this than just a simple crime. It didn't add up. What added up was what the Warren Commission in its blundering, sloppy, badly written report said they got it right. They wrote it wrong, but they got it right. Mickey, beyond the investigations, beyond, uh, uh, you know, the conspiracy theories and everything else, articulate the mood in the country, um, you know, from, you know, the, the jarring shock of it um, to the disbelief. And, and obviously we knew what would happen in months later with the deaths of both uh, MLK and his brother Bobby. Um, but just talk about what America was like then um, and, and how tough a few days, weeks, months and year it was. No, I, I think you're right, and yet you, you can't tie all this stuff to, together in, 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 in any significant operational way. It was, it's tied together in that it reflected a mood in a country, a country that was uh, a bit edgy uh, and, and, you know, was still in the Cold War, was still, uh, uh, it, it was an emotional time. Uh, and, and, of course, the later murders, Martin Luther King, Robert Kennedy, uh, it, it, you put it all together, there, were, there was no relationship between them in, in a sense that, that one somehow or other had something to do with the other, but they all had something to do with the mood of the country and the, uh, the, the, the shock that, that we felt, uh, that, that, that everybody felt. And it took a long time to, well, I don't know if it ever did wear off. I was going to say, wear off now, look at it now. Mm. The wounds that the country suffered still exist. If anything, how do you think things would have been different um, if Jack lived and he, and he, you know, won a second term and, and he finished out his time in office? How would it be different if you have to look in that crystal ball, Mickey, as a country? Uh, that, uh, that's a darn good question. Of course, it's unanswerable. I think Jeff Greenfield wrote a, a, a book, Fiction. Yeah. Uh, projecting what he thought should happen, really. I mean, what happened was, uh, if you read uh, Caro's latest book on, on Lyndon Johnson, Johnson came in, to, took over as president, and all, almost immediately, he started to make things happen. The budget, the civil rights uh, uh, bill, so forth and so on. Uh, you don't know. Kennedy, uh, could he have been a, a really great president? Could he have even been a good? You don't know. Yeah. And it was a thousand days. And he didn't accomplish much of anything in those thousand days. What could he have done? What was his potential? Oh, Lord, I don't know. Well, it's amazing that it is 50 years. Um, and I want to thank, uh, again, Mickey Carroll for being kind enough to give us a few minutes. Thanks, Mickey. Uh, thanks for having me on. And there is much more uh, to think about and discuss in this special edition of RFL. When we come back, Camelot. In our hearts and minds, what was it about Jack Kennedy that made his murder so personal to so many? And why do so many remember so much about that moment 50 years ago to the day? Why is JFK still so celebrated a half a century after his passing? RFL special report, JFK 50 years later, continues right after this. <laughs>